Welcome back to lesson two of the week. Today we're doing ratios. I'm excited because again, like I said yesterday, it's a change of pace today. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, so I'm going to try to pack some information in here real quick. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. Um, it's as simple as comparing boys to girls in the classroom. Right? If I were to say, how many boys are there? How many girls? Maybe there's five to seven, right? Five boys to seven girls. That's what a ratio is. It's just comparing two things. And in this particular case right here, this is a problem from my old book, and it's comparing red paper clips to blue paper clips. And you can't see it because it's in black and white. Um, but these two paper clips right here are red and the rest are blue. So if I were to ask you to compare them, uh, you could write it out as a ratio and say that there were two red paper clips to six blue paper clips. Um, and ratios can be written in many different ways as in two to six. Um, uh, two to six right here with the colon or as a fraction two to six and this one right here is going to be the most common one that we use because we've been practicing with fractions so much. Um, ratios of uh, red paper clips to blue, blue paper clips in this case two to six. We could also ask the other way around and say uh, what is the ratio of blue paper clips to red paper clips and you would just say six to two. You just say it the other way around. It's literally just comparing two things. Um, we often represent them in simplest form We'll get that in a second. So let's take a look at the first example. The first example here says, write the ratio in simplest form that compares the number of suns to the number of moons, and then explain its meaning. Um, so here we go. Uh, you guys can't see it very well, uh, but what we have here is one, two, three, four suns, and one, two, three, four, five, six moons. Our objective is to compare the number of suns to the number of moons in terms of a ratio. And as I said, the best way we're going to be able to do that is by a fraction. So the number of suns, 4, to the number of moons, 6. And the ratio of them together is 4 to 6. Now, as the problem said, we would want to represent this in simplest form. So as it is right now, it's literally just the total number of moons or suns and moons. But when we simplify it, right, if we divide this by a common factor, its greatest common factor, which is 2, you get this down to 2 over 3. And what we would say here is when it says explain its meaning, we would say originally that there are 4 suns to 6 moons, which is correct. But we could say it simpler and say that for every 2 suns there are, for every 2 suns there are, there are how many moons? 1, 2, 3, right? For every 2 suns, there are three moons because it's just a simplified version of it. It's almost like taking it and cutting it down to something that's a little bit more simple. So instead of saying, oh, look, for every four suns, there's six moons, which is true, we could say it's simpler and say that for every two suns, there are three moons. And that's just the same ratio. These ratios are equivalent, just like fractions. They're equivalent ratios, but this one's just simpler, and we're always going to opt for the simpler one. Okay? So any ratios we deal with today, we're going to be simplifying. So you might run into a problem where I ask you to simplify the ratio um, 6 eighths. And if I ask you to simplify the ratio 6 eighths, your job would be to just simplify the fraction, right? which is what we've done a lot of. And in this case, find a common factor between 6 and 8 and divide them down. Um, so in this case, the greatest common factor would be 2. And when you divide them, you get 3 fourths. So your answer would be 3 fourths. The simplest form of that ratio, 6 to 8, is 3 fourths. The next type of problem that you're going to run into is I'm actually going to give you two ratios with a missing value. For example, I can give you the ratio 3 fourths and say that, that, it, that this is equivalent to something over 16. And uh, this is kind of cool because you can uh, use your ability to multiply or divide to help you find this out. Um, but your job would be to find out what ratio would be equivalent to 3 fourths if the denominator was 16. And the way you would do this is you would just see what would it take to get you from 4 to 16 in this case. For example, you would do 4 times 4 to get 16. And if you did the same thing, same thing to the top one, you multiplied it by 4, you would find out that you would get 12 here. So your answer to this problem would be 12. 
and the ratios would still be equivalent, right? 3 fourths and 12 sixteenths are equivalent fractions, equivalent ratios. But your objective would be to find that missing value. Um, we can try another one real quick too. Um, let's do let's do it the other way around. Let's say we have nine over twenty-one, and I say that you get a seven down here, and the question would be what would be up here? What number would go here to make these ratios equivalent? And then you would have to think, oh well, how would I get then from twenty-one to seven? 21 down to 7 would be to divide it by 3. Then what would happen up here to this 9? We had the same thing. If it's going to stay equivalent, we divide it by 3. So what is the missing value here? The missing value is 3. So 9 over 21 would be equivalent to 3 over 7. Um, but your job would be to find that missing value. Uh, here's an example, too, where um, we're comparing uh, part to whole. Uh, what, everything we just did was comparing part to part. It's comparing uh, two things, uh, two types of the same things to one another, like red paper clips, blue, blue paper clips. But what about um, if you were to compare um, a part to whole? For example, um, say red paper clips to all of your paper clips, or um, suns to all astral objects, I guess. Um, so here's a good example of this. Several students named their favorite flavor of gum. Write the ratio that compares the number of students chose fruit to the total number of students. So we look at our responses here, and we see that three students picked fruit. So we're going to take three students and compare that to the total number of students. So we have to figure out how many students actually said what their favorite flavor of gum was. And we can see that nine said peppermint, eight said cinnamon, three said fruit, and one said cinnamon. So let's go ahead and count up how many total students. Total means all of them. Not just everyone else that didn't pick fruit, all of them. So let's add them all up. 9 and 1 is 10, 8 and 3 is 11. So that makes a total of 21 students total that gave responses here. But our job was to compare how many said fruit to all of them. Well, 3 out of 21 kids said that they liked the fruit gum. And that is how we would take and compare a part to whole relationship because whole meaning all of them. So then what we would do just to be safe is make sure that this is in simplest form. Uh, so not to say that for every 21 kids that three of them liked gum, we could say, um, divide this down because the grade common factor is three. We could say that for every um, one or for every seven kids in the building, one kid likes fruit gum. And that's how we would use ratios to make statements like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so let's try one more. Um, a pet store sold animals listed in the table in one week. Write the ratio of cats to pets sold that week and then explain its meaning. Um, so first we're going to be comparing cats to the number of pets sold. Well, here's all the pets sold. So how many total pets were sold? Well, we would add all this together to figure out how many total pets were sold, right? 10 uh, 14 is 24, plus 8 is 32, so we would say 32 pets sold. But we're supposed to be comparing the number of cats that were sold to that which is right here, cats were eight. So the number of cats sold compared to the number of pets sold was eight out of 32. Now, obviously we would want to reduce this down so we can explain its meaning. Um, so we would simplify this fraction the best we can. I believe the greatest common factor is eight. Um, so when we divide this down, we end up getting one fourth. And so basically what we could say now with this information right here, if we're talking about cats being sold compared to all pets being sold, one cat would be sold for every four pets that were sold. So if the, the store sold four pets, um, you could assume that one of those pets sold uh, would be a cat. And that's our lesson for today. Uh, good luck on the assignment, guys. Please ask me questions if you got them. Um, I really enjoy ratios and rates. I'm excited for this chapter, so let's get it.